what our agenda looks like. That's kind of what a, our agenda looks like today. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. So if you haven't already, um, if you can possibly do a quick check to ensure that you're on mute. Um, as we get into the presentation, feel free to unmute yourself when we're doing the participation portion. Um, you can press unmute at the bottom bar, I believe, to the left um, when you're ready to speak. Um, and then the next thing, um, this presentation will be shared. So all of the slides and resources in this presentation, um, we will share that in a follow-up email. And um, the recording as well, we can share the link that we'll, we, where we will be posting it. Um, so anyone who's not here today, please feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I can send out all the resources that we're using today. Um, and then if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to shoot me a message in the chat box. Um, I believe there's a portion where you can do it privately if you want. Um, and we will have someone um, monitoring the chat box throughout the presentation. Um, and if, you, if we don't get to your question today, we can follow up with a direct email as well. So I believe that there was a notification, so we are recording right now. Um, if you don't feel comfortable being recorded, please feel free to turn off your camera. Um, and yeah, I believe that's it for my portion. So I do think we have people still rolling in. So um, if you're just entering in here, please feel free to mute your mic um, as we we're getting into the presentation. Thank you. Okay, I think the baton's been passed to me. Um, my name is Paul Miller, as I was introduced. I'm from the KT First Nation out in the uh, uh, Fraser Valley. Um, part of the community development team here, uh, supporting you guys today, representing my LA Dodgers, uh, winning the World Series last night. I became, quickly, I became a fan in 88 when they won their last one and um, have had some tough times since then, <laughs> but happy to see them pull that off last night. Um, and we wanted to start with just getting a sense of where everybody is at um, in your health and wellness planning journey. So what kind of experience you have, that will give us a little bit of a sense moving through some of the slides on where we can focus if we've got a bunch of um, people that are new to planning or a bunch of experienced planners and, and, and just um, take the conversation in an appropriate um, pathway. So. I think a poll will come through the um, Zoom platform and just has a couple of radio buttons. Just click on um, the appropriate one and we'll um, show those numbers and give us a sense of where everybody is at. Wow, it's like uh, watching election results. Really great to see we have like so far 17, 18 FNHA staff and that's really um, a shout out to the regions and um, the central staff that are here to support everybody on their planning journeys. It's a bit of our, what we're calling a wraparound approach that we bring in all the team members that you need to speak to. So it's a bit of a one window um, way that we support you and pull in the resources that you've identified as important. So we've got um, eight that are new to planning, 11 that have done planning before. So, you know, about a 50-50 mix almost. Um, so we'll keep that in mind as, as we move um, forward with, with um, some of our slides and exercises and, um, you know, with a large amount of, of new people, we, you know, when we get to questions and stuff like that, no, no questions are um, silly. Um, you know, we're here to, here to provide resources at 
depending on whatever level um, you're coming from. So, so I'm not sure. Do I need to stop? So in general, linking health and wellness plans to other plans in your sort of um, environment and what you're working in is what we're here to talk about. And, and the benefits are pretty clear. We're, we're, we're talking, you know, we'll go through a lot of the smaller benefits, but the main ones are minimizing, repeating similar planning. So planning is an activity that's very similar. Whatever the, the subject matter, whether it's land use, whether it's health and wellness, whether it's comprehensive community planning, if it's truly a community driven process, a lot of the pieces are the same. The, the, the activities that you're doing are the same. Engaging with communities, rolling up data, spitting that out to the community to do some ground truthing. You know, those are all very, <laughs> similar activities. So if you know of other planning activities that are happening in your community, it's great to sort of uh, minimize repeating or, or maybe you're going to previous plans in the same subject matter area um, and working off what you've already heard from your community um, and bringing some of those forward and seeing where the changes are you know, it's always easier to make amendments um, than to start from scratch. And that leads into, you know, saving time and money by leveraging some of these processes. So we know planning dollars are, uh, it's a hard resource to tap into. Um, FNHA has made a, a solid commitment to support health and wellness planning, but other planning activities have, have Tough time securing resources, um, stretching your dollars, what are um, eligible activities under each of those programs. So if you can save time by having an, an engagement session um, and kill two, three, four birds with one stone and talk about a bunch of different topics, you know, gathering people is hard, especially in this um, environment that we're working in. So having um, multiple um, goals for some of your events or, you know, if you're sending out a survey, maybe you want to have a comprehensive um, survey that touches on a bunch of different areas rather than people filling out four and five, you know, you're talking about engagement fatigue, about, you know, how much more does the, do these people want to know from each of your band members. So. Um, thinking about ways that you can do that and share share processes moving forward, and and lastly, just just thinking about alignment of planning priorities. And I and I and when we talk about that, it's about you know making sure that the priorities identified in plans aren't contradictory to enough to one another. You know that that what how you've mentioned land use and and what you set aside for cultural practices doesn't um, you know interfere with housing policies or recreation and you know you just have an idea of what that all of these plans aren't little silos that they really are sort of a, a an organism of planning that supports your entire community so really just seeing that those um, priorities are aligned and and I think that would will help create this um, ecosystem and see that all the parts are talking to one another and, and, and quite frankly, it will make for a very fruitful um, planning process. Um, so here's an, uh, an example of some of the plans that um, we're thinking about talking about linking plans and, you know, coming from the health world, maybe you're not um, completely aware of some of these plans that do exist and, and can inform your, your health and wellness plan moving 
forward. So, you know, I won't, I won't go over each of those, but, you know, just pulling in some of the main ones, like a CCP, a comprehensive community plan, is an overarching umbrella plan that usually has a lot of um, subject areas, governance, land use, economy, you know, all of those types of things. So they have some higher level um, goals and, and visions that can inform a lot of these plans, but there's some very specific ones like climate change, um, maybe it's your chief and council strategic plan. So it, it's about looking at those and understanding, like I said, um, what's been, what work has previously been done, what work is ongoing. Uh, the little red circles that have popped up are, are plans that are external to your community, but may play an influence on what your health and wellness plan might look like. Regional districts um, that your community resides in, maybe you have a nation plan for your lar larger um, collective of, of other communities. Um, I have a bunch of pop-up boxes that are over these other ones. Let me just <laughs> move some things around here. Um, regional health authorities, not uh, the FNHA ones, but the provincial ones, and maybe just the city or, or municipal plan that that, um, that affects where your community's at. So that's a large number of plans that you're thinking about, and and I don't I don't necessarily think that you need to read each cover to cover but getting an idea of which ones may influence. And we'll go into some of those um, exercises later on of picking the ones that you think might influence your health and wellness plan the most for your community. Some uh, community up in the North will have a lot of different um, plans that are um, more robust and more influential in the health area than say somebody on the coast or Vancouver Island. <laughs> Next slide. Hi, everyone. Um, so I wanted to introduce and reintroduce for some people uh, this slide and this information. This tree of um, kind of outlines some of the planning, reporting, and evaluation standards. You can find this visual in the Health and Wellness Planning Toolkit. As you can see, the seven directives represent the roots of health and wellness planning. And uh, these directives keep us grounded. The reporting, planning, and evaluation standards represent the tree branches that are interconnected and help support quality and excellence. These standards ensure that we work together to reach quality outcomes and uphold excellence in planning at all level levels, whether it's community, nation, regional, and province-wide planning. The three ones that are circled um, highlight some of the linkages that we'll be discussing today. Next slide. All right, so I want to take a moment just to invite Jessica Frank, um, if she's here in the room. Um, she's a health director at Little Watt Nation, um, and we wanted to invite her to share some of her community's planning journey. So Jessica, do you, are you there at all? Yes, I'm here. Hi, take it away. The floor is yours. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Thank you for inviting me to this uh, session. Um, I've been talking community plans for 18 months now. Um, anyways, I'm Jessica Frank. I'm health director for Le Leowette Nation, uh, part of the Southern Statlium Nations. Um, I've been on my job for 18 months as health director and it's been a, <laughs> a bumpy road, happy road, uh, you name it, everything. Um, but uh, there was, there's, there needs to be a lot of work done. And, you know, it, I've been trucking through them as, as they came up. But um, with our community plans, the, the first step that, you know, that I thought was the best step was uh, to approach my leadership and we did a, a presentation to our chiefs and council and stating that I wanted to start with uh, an evaluation of my services. Uh, we're at the end stage of our evaluation. I'm hoping to have a draft uh, at the end of next week to review and 
And then after we review the evaluation program, I mean, evaluation document, I'm going to be presenting it to my health committee. And my health committee represents an elder, youth, and three community members. And then also we have a chair of um, one of our council members from chief and council. And then get their input and feedback and just provide them the information as well. And then the next piece that we're going to start working on is our strategic planning for community health plan. Uh, we're going to use the evaluation process as our guide for our community health plan. Uh, we, we, we also did a community survey, um, which was uh, uh, a really daunting task as well, because we, we have at least 2,200 people in our community, uh, whether they're Leoat Nation or other First Nations or even non-First Nations in our community. And we, our return rate for our surveys was uh, 225. Uh, that was our minimum, but we got 250, sorry, we got 250 surveys returned. And the survey was based on what the community wanted for Leoat Health and Healing's uh, um services that we provide and then we also attach some questions in there because we're also working on a mental health and wellness plan on top of our community health plan so we're trying to combine them all together and um it's been an amazing process uh we're 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 looking at the next steps for our community health plan and then our mental health and wellness planning, um, hoping to start in the new year, or we're trying to decide if we wanna do our community health plan or mental health and wellness planning first. We don't know which one to do first. Uh, so we're gonna bring that question to our health board and see which, which one is more pressing because um, I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be our mental health and wellness planning because our, our community has been struggling in our Cedar Circle team at the moment. Uh, we're down to one uh, NADAF worker and we're still posting for um, new, new uh, hires for within our department. I think we're short four or five staff. So then maybe that will guide us on our activities for our mental health team. Um, community engagement has also been uh, hard during this time. We, we've been putting out Zoom calls to our community members and also doing individual calls with people that are volunteering to help share information with us. Um, I think we, we've done maybe about 50 individual calls and about six focus groups. Um, but, uh, you know, just reaching out to who I thought may be able to contribute to our evaluation or our community health plan or mental wellness planning. And, you know, they've been really excited to have their voice heard. Uh, and then we're pulling documentation that has been done in the past. Like we had an elders uh, document created. We had a mental health plan that was created. We had an early childhood uh, plan. And so we're gonna try to combine all of those and put them together. And then on the top, um, above all those as well, we we've also completed our community health plan, uh, not community health plan, our Communicable Emergency Disease Plan. I always forget the acronyms for it, but we've also finished that plan as well um, with the help, of course, with, uh, from FNHA. And we're, our last process with that plan is we're going to be presenting it to our Chiefs of Council so they'll be aware and adopt that plan as well. I just want to share that you're um, sounding very garbled right now. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have really good Wi-Fi service, but I, I don't know why it's gargly. Sorry. <laughs> You're okay now, Jessica. We can hear you a little bit clearer. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of uh, briefly of all the planning that we've been working on the Alliance Nation. And I'm happy to talk with anyone or <laughs> not sure I have that much time, but just wanted to share kind of what I've been working on and the challenges and some of the successes that we have, we've had. And, you know, you know me, I, I, I celebrate all of the accomplishments, whether it's little or, or big. So, um, I think that's it. So, thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jessica. Uh, yeah, you're a little bit, a little bit mum, like, I think it's just the connection issues that we may be having. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for sharing. I mean, it's always good to hear community story and, um, you know, the realities of what health directors and community planners are living right now, especially in COVID, our COVID context. And Jessica, I think even with your community, you guys have so much planning, exciting planning happening in your community. And just to see those conversations unfold is just so amazing. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing. And um, if it's okay with your permission, I, I, like maybe um, some individuals that are on the call could potentially reach out to you, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, she's nodding. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Um, okay, so from here, I will hand it over to Annie. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. Um, so we're going to dive into a few examples of plans. Annie, I think you might be muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, there you go. Okay. Did, was I muted? that whole time no you kind of muted yourself part way through so okay my finger <laughs> touched my phone sorry guys technical difficulties um so we'll start with the ccp the comprehensive community plan that paul mentioned earlier uh so this is kind of a, a, a great example of a broad plan an umbrella plan that can encapsulate a whole bunch of different areas um often touching on a lot that has to do with health and wellness and social determinants of health. Um, so it can be really great uh, as a starting point um, if you're beginning the planning process and aren't sure whether, you know, a CCP has been done recently or not, um, just to find out to reach out um, either within um, your team and department um, or if you can't find out there, then um, our community development team can help track that information down for you too. Um, so the, maybe we'll go to the next slide. So um, with the CCP, um, there's kind of a whole bunch of linking things to consider. Um, right off the bat, looking at uh, what goals within that CCP relate to health and wellness. We'll go through an exercise to actually try this out in just a little bit together. Um, and then it might be that, you know, the, if a CCP was done really recently and it covers off quite a few health and wellness goals and a lot of great community engagement was done in that process, then maybe um, that can be kind of a, a jumping off point so we can talk uh, with you and your team about um, maybe rather than starting a, a plan from scratch, from in, instead looking at are there, if knowing that we have that and it's you know, relevant and still in place, uh, what extra details might we need to add into it um, to make sure that it covers off uh, the core program um, areas for health and wellness. So things like home and community care or nursing or um, communicable disease control, all of these little bits and pieces. And um, our intent there is really to make the process um, as easy as possible for you so you're not kind of starting from scratch. Um, and so uh, it might also be that you have a health and wellness plan 
um, that's getting started and the CCP at the same time. If that's the case for you, um, we're happy to bring in our partners over at Indigenous Services Canada who support comprehensive community planning. We've got a really great relationship with them um, as well. So we're happy to kind of do a wraparound approach across our team uh, and really make sure that we're making this process as easy as possible for everyone involved. So with that, I'll hand it over to Isa. Sorry, I was on <laughs> Um, yes, so the other plan that you could potentially take a look at it that also should be mentioning maybe um, health and wellness is the strategic plan. Uh, the strategic plan is more of a long term plan and usually is developed by the leadership or the administration of your uh, community and also could be uh, of your department itself. And Usually those plans are at a higher level and they will be mentioning things like vision and uh, mission or values. Um, these are the things that will identify where the first station wants to get to and how um, they want to get there. Um, next slide. So, the things that you could look at, like, for example, in the toolkit, there is a piece uh, where we're touching like implementation um, of the work plan. So these are the pieces that kind of link together and sometimes you're doing implementation that could be potentially joined together. Like if you're implementing, for example, a new system um, where you want to have some indicator for health and wellness that are being measured as well as other indicator for other area in your organization. Those are the kind of thing that you can kind of link together. Um, so it's um, a little bit of a strategic thinking. Um, all of the uh, webinar that we're doing right now is really to kind of try to streamline the effort that you have to put into implementing your plan, into putting it together, developing it. And, 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 and like it was mentioned earlier, looking at the other plans that you have might be just a good uh, start of um, ideas and giving you ideas of where you should be going with this. Next slide. Great, so um, if you are ready to go, we will hop into a quick activity now. So we're gonna try out breakout rooms. So full disclosure, I think this is our team's First time using breakout rooms, so bear with us as we uh, go here. We've done a few practice runs. Um, and so what we're hoping to do in this exercise is kind of take all this talking and try something out together um, in small groups. So we're going to take a look at an example, just a completely, completely hypothetical comprehensive community plan for community A um, that was developed in 2015 and is intended to provide strategic direction all the way through to 2025 um, for this hypothetical community. Um, they've just received funding for a health and wellness plan and want to draw from this existing CCP to kind of inform the work. Um, so from here, we'll break out into groups and dive into that a little bit more with some uh, discussion. Sorry, Jessica, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm off of mute officially. <laughs> so if you guys want to unmute yourself, we can have a bit of, dis of a discussion here. Um, and 
Um, I just want to confirm you guys can see my slides as well. Yes, we can. Perfect. So we'll just go and dive into a little bit of um, the activity here. So as Annie had mentioned, you know, the sample scenario is really, you know, community A is looking to really look to uh, build a health and wellness plan and they want to draw from their current CCP. And so we'll kind of just take a walk through this and, and no, there's no wrong answer. No, you know what I mean? We're just kind of getting those wheels, um, you know, turning, assessing those linkages. So that's kind of what we want to do here. Um, so, you know, hypothetically, we open the document and we really take a look at, you know, the table of contents. And this is one of the first pages that you see, you'll see in a, in a CCP. So if we take a look, you know, we have a, an executive summary, we have a vision, some principles that they have. Um, they really go into, you know, about our community um, and where do we want to go, which is, you know, through the goals and objectives of the community, the process and how to get there um, and how we'll really get there. So again, it really brings in, you know, those work plans, the budget portions, the activities, um, and then really looking at, you know, monitoring and evaluating um, their CCP. So this is kind of what the CCP could potentially look like. Um, it's different for every community, but this is, again, I'm just a hypothetical example. So one question I did want to put out to our, our um, group is um, what kind of elements of this CCP might be helpful in building a community health and wellness plan? Do you guys have any ideas? Um, uh, hi, Charlene here. Uh, I think what would be helpful um, is the uh, activities that we have, like the, um, like building a, a, a gym in the community. So th that will help with, to address some of the mental health activities. And it will also uh, be a um, gathering place. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. something. And, and just to pull on that, that sounds like a little bit of a capital project there too, right? So that's a capital plan that you could kind of build into these plans as well. Yes. Yeah. Any, any other, any other uh, comments, ideas? Um, I, maybe in, it's about our community history, but what's already in, oh, I guess that would be what's already in community so we know what we're building from yeah exactly yeah i think that's pretty important and some of the health and wellness plans that we do see is that they do build a community profile right into their health plan you know looking at population size geographical you know location and you know all of these um, you know, contextualized factors before they kind of get into the nitty gritty of the health plan. And that really looks at, you know, where they're currently at. And I, I think that's a great, that's a great start for sure. Any other um, ideas around what could be helpful and what we could pull from this CCP into our health and wellness plan? I'll give a little tip. Um, I really personally like the monitoring and evaluation. Um, it's one thing when we build a plan and really look at, you know, where we want to go. And then as we kind of get into more of the implementation um, phases of these things, we really want to look at, okay, how well are we doing, right? Our community has said, you know, this is a need for community and this is what we're going to do to address that need and for one, have we done this? Have we met that goal? And so I think it might be really helpful that the monitoring and evaluation plan that is in the CCP could potentially, you know, be adapted or, you know, built into the same as the community health and wellness plan. And I think that is one of um, our team's goals as well when we work with communities is to really bring that evaluation and that, you know, reporting out back to community and saying, hey, you know, we've heard that you, your voice has said this and this is what we're doing to address it and this is how far we've come. Or this is, you know, this is where what we need to do to get there. So I think that's like a super important and helpful component of a CCP for, for sure. It's, Any it's other been, comments? Before? Uh, 
sorry, it's Adrian here. I just, I think that one of the reasons we just did this and, and I think it's important to put the methodology of which you, of that um, the community is engaged through, like what is the methodology? But it's just, it's not just um, community goals and objectives but, and process, but it's actual, how did we do it? How did we engage the community? So instead of processes, I, I would be putting in there something about engagement uh, methodology so you can track the efficacy of that as well. Perfect, great point. Yeah, for sure. It's always helpful to kind of see, you know, how how that engagement works. and I, and. And really, in the COVID context right now, we're really looking for creative ways to engage our community. So that's, you know, that's um, could even potentially be a wise practice for your community to look back on. So that's perfect point. So I'll move on to our next um, sort of question while we're on the topic. So here we kind of move in. So we've we've scanned the table of contents. And we're really curious to see what kind of community goals could be a good starting point for our community health and wellness plan that are already laid out in our CCP. So some of the goals on the left hand side that you'll see are, you know, improving access to housing, address our community's educational needs, supporting youth activities and involvement, you know, wellness and healing, new economic opportunities and really um, protecting the lands and our waters. So um, one question is like, you know, what goals can we take from this CCP that could also inform a community health and wellness plan? Do you guys have any, you know, ideas or see any linkages or if there's experience that you guys have, um, you know, building these linkages as well, that would be great. Well, again, it's Adrian here. Just, just to, just to, um, just to contribute what what we just did is that where do we want to go from here? Well, we had to go to the to the community and um, really, in a very careful and gentle way, um, share what we are able to do in the community health and wellness um, within the context of the. Um, federal program service delivery models. And so we needed to level set with the community what we were actually doing now before we could move on where do we want to go. And so we had to do a, a current state, if you, if you will, with the community. Um, in a, and that just developing that took four months. Um, that way to uh, share with the community that we do so that it was understandable and in a culturally safe way. And so really before we decide where we want to go we have to actually know where we are and and have a, an understanding with the community that within the constraints of the federal programs this is what we are allowed to do and then that's really helps people have ideas about how they want to embed the particular culture uh, within the programming and as a foundational element of the programming for example For sure. And you can kind of see that process as you were kind of talking, we kind of see that process unfold, right? Like where, you know, where are we right now? Where do we want to go? And I think that's, that's, a, that's very helpful. Thanks for sharing, Adrian. Is there anybody else that would like to maybe answer the question or share some of their experiences? Charlene had to take a call. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we can kind of see here, um, you know, as we look at some of the goals in the CCP, you know, this hypothetical one really has that social determinants of health feel. Um, so even though that these, you know, access to housing, educational needs, you know, even those kind of those, you know, components really reside outside of the health box. There are different, de definitely linkages and influences that can happen on, you know, individual family and community health and wellness. So I think that's, um, you know, it, it, it's really important to recognize. And I think, um, you know, as Annie had said before, this is really like a CCP can be seen as like an umbrella plan. And then a health and wellness plan can kind of go into the little 
you know, as feeding up into that CCP and, and taking that social determinants of health feel. So, um, it, and it's definitely something that, you know, our team can help support or, you know, some of the, the ideas that are coming from community, definitely there's ways to kind of build it in and, and we can get creative and how that and how, what that looks like and how that looks like. And I think Adrian had kind of touched on that um, on how really pull it, pulling it into a format that's easily understandable, that's culturally safe, that's, you know, tailoring it to community so that community understands, you know, okay, this is where we are. And this is where I think, you know, we could definitely go or be as a community. So I think that's really exciting. <laughs> so for sure. Um, and just curious, is anybody in the room currently building their community health and wellness plan? Hi, it's Kirsten Milton here from New Hulk. Um, I believe we're going to be starting to build our community health and wellness plans. Um, so this is very helpful for me. We do have an old expired one um, that we were hoping to just build from, but it's it, it really does not reflect the, the need anymore, the healthcare needs in the community. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a little bit frustrating, um, just trying to build off of what some of the, the older plans look like. Um, you know, especially with things like the drug crisis that wasn't reflected in the old plan. So home and community care, things like that really need to be revamped in our plans. Um, my, 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 my confusing part or my frustrating part is uh, my position has been split in two from the nation. So I'm in charge of health. I'm the health director. But we also have a counterpart, which is half of me, the wellness director. So to try and get us both together to develop the plans has been the struggle. Um, I believe wellness has already um, part, mostly done their plan for New Hulk, and now it's just trying to reflect those pieces of health and how do we how do we combine them to provide that wraparound service that our community is needing? Yeah, for sure. I can definitely see that that can be that can be tough and and um, you know really making those linkages and relationships are important as well. Yeah, for sure. Adrian, I see you were kind of muting and unmuting. Did you want? Did you have a comment or, or question? No, not at all. I was just. I forgot to mute myself. I apologize. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> no worries. I, I was just wondering, I, though, I was just sort of wondering, um, just by show of hands, who's, who's working, like, on, in this little group? Like, who's working on their community health plan? It's kind of nice to know. So is everybody that is not a FANA employee working on their health plans right now, or has anybody got them done? Their, their health and wellness, yeah, health and wellness, and working their way through the toolkit. <laughs> so Le Leanne, is Leanne in our group? Yeah, Leanne, so she's working on the, her health and wellness plan. Oh, yeah, there's a raise hand. And then I think... Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I, and we're really recognizing um, to, you know, everyone is at a different stage in their plan and, and that's okay, you know, and that's kind of where, you know, um, supports can come in and, and really meet you where you're at and, and, and work with you to build that support in. So that's definitely um, a good idea. Sorry, I'm just getting, <laughs> I think we might have to be um, getting pulled back into the main group. I think it's so helpful though that, you know, sharing your experiences, um, you know, with each other and, and, you know, with Jessica sharing earlier, kind of like how she's starting to think of these things and, you know, getting the wheels kind of turning um, is really, really good. And, and, you know, it's, 
it, it can be very daunting. It can be a very daunting task. And I think Adrian, you had kind of hit the nail on the head too. Like it, it, it took you a little while to kind of even just shed some light on, you know, where you guys are currently. And, and like, it doesn't, a plan doesn't come together in, you know, six months. <laughs> so um, I think that's um, where we can kind of lean on each other for supports and, um, you know, our team is always, the door is always open for our team, even if, you know, we have, we have connections even to programs. So home and community care, mental health and wellness, um, primary, uh, not primary care, um, home and community, sorry, I said home and community care, environmental public health services. So those core programs as well, we have connections to, you know, if we're, you know, want to build out that program a little more, uh, funding arrangements, we have connections to, so really looking, reviewing your funding arrangement, what can be done, what are the capacities, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, really wanted to encourage that and and again with the regional teams that we have a lot of regional partners on the call here today so we work with them um the cecs the regional planners um or our door is always open for anyone and everyone and yeah that'll be that'll be great okay so i think we have about i think vanessa shared about a five minute warning um is there any other stories that you guys want to share I'd like to share, can you hear me? It's Juanita yep. for Haida Gwaii. Um, I watched, it was like watching an opera with a conductor um, conducting the process, but um, I attended all the meetings in Skidigit when Lauren worked with a consultant to do their um, health and wellness plans for their um, health center and the health society. And they started with a community survey and um, with um, the health society, they've set it up in a clan system. So there's a representative from every clan in the community. And the idea was for them to encourage their clan members to fill out the survey. And it was a health survey. And from that survey, the consultant took it all and brought it to the board meeting, the and they looked it over and they added what they wanted to. And then the consultant worked with all the health center staff on two days of strategic planning. And they took all the, the requests and needs from the survey and they built their strategic plan around what the community wanted. And then when they were finished with that two days of planning, they held community engagement, invited the whole community and went over what they had came up with and offered space for community to give input, whether they agreed or not, what needed to be added. And that's how they came up with their health and wellness strategic plan all in one. And it was quite amazing. So everybody at every level was engaged and had an opportunity. Um, but that was before COVID hit. So I don't know having the community engaged might be difficult. If there's a way we could figure on Facebook, everybody engages on there. Yeah, I think that's, you know, uh, you know, social media can be, can have its downfalls and have it, you know, um, upticks as well. Like, you know, so everyone's on social media. <laughs> Um, I think that Juanita, that story that you shared is is that's a really creative way on how to engage members. Um, I've honestly I've never heard it done that way, and that is so cool. Like, <laughs> um, so thanks for sharing that, and it it kind of gives us ideas, right, on like how we can engage, and and even in this context, like it can be. Oh, we're about leaving in fifty six seconds. So I want to thank you, you guys for sharing and um, we'll probably head back. If you click on the late breakout room, it'll head back to the, the main, um, the main platform. So I will see you guys there. Thanks. Hi guys, sorry, I will.
speak? Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, so I will hand it over to Isa. Um, I think we have everyone back in the room now, give or take one or two left. Um, so welcome back and I will hand it over to Isa. Well, thank you very much. That was very, uh, very well. Uh, <laughs> it went well on my end anyways. So <laughs> the next activity that we are asking you to do, we're going to ask you to use that chat box uh, where you can actually like just enter your um, questions. There's a little chat box at the bottom of your screen and your um, in your, in your, uh, just beside the participant, there's a chat box that you can actually click and you can open it. So what we're asking you is like, amongst all of these plans that you're seeing on the screen, we're asking you, what are the three plans do you feel are important to link in your health and wellness back in your community? Like not in general, and we're really asking for you and your community, what are the, the, the three plans that you think in that whole circle of plans is the, 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 the one that are really important in your community. So please use the chat box and, um, and just give us a little bit of an answer. We'll give you a few minutes or seconds, I guess we're running. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Julia um, from Gitsa Gukla that says strategic plan, mental health and wellness and CCP. There's no wrong or good answer. Anybody else? Yes, it's, I mean, sort of like what I was saying, where, you know, maybe a community's focus is land use and economic development, and that's going to drive your health and wellness plan, but somebody on the, in a different location, more remote, more urban, um, might have different opportunities, and um, something that's more important for your community, so. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Mental health that are coming back. Mm -hmm. And as you continue to chat, maybe that is a little cross promotion. Um, you know, I think each of the regions um, is delivering uh, mental health MOU planning dollars. Um, you know, we can link you up with your regional contacts if you don't have those already. Um, and um, that's another um, place where we can find some synergies, you know, making a robust mental health and wellness plan as part of your health and wellness plan. And lots of health and lots of wellness here going on, but, um, but just sort of identifying um, some additional resources to, to really um, tease that piece out and get a lot more um, Specificity, specificity. I'm going to leave it at that. So it looks like we're having a lot of the CCP, mental health and wellness and strategic plan are coming back quite often, which I think is really reflective of the situation we're in right now. Um, so that's good. So if I go to the second questions, I'm going to ask you why. Why you pick one of these plan in your community? Why is that particular plan important in your community? So use a chat box again and just give us your answer. Hey Jess, you just need to adjust your view on the um, Zoom. So yeah, just while people are typing, I guess, um, you know, like if we've heard a lot of communities that mental health and wellness is important, what's driving that need? Why, what is happening in your community where, where you feel like you really need to respond to that in a, you know, and make sure that your health and wellness plan is aligned with those goals. Yeah, lots of. Varna was saying, like, communities are always experiencing mental health crisis. Um, mm -hmm. We were in our um, breakout session, we ended up talking about um, the mental health throughout the COVID and what 
you know, can be done to kind of uh, put a little more um, support to the people while we are in that pandemic. And, and I and I think you know, even just thinking um, as an indigenous person, like, do our people feel comfortable calling a hotline? Like we're used to sitting down and talking to people and. Um, you know, sharing in, in circles and as groups and understanding the struggles of other people and how do we, how do we address mental health and wellness in a culturally appropriate way? Like, you know, the typical therapist and patient um, um, relationship probably doesn't work for a lot of people. So what are those types of areas? And I think that's why there's been a lot of additional resources put in the mental health um, area and and they are pretty um, flexible I think in, in the types of ways you can deliver those supports to your community members so really great to see a that um, that people are identifying that as, as probably a key goal but b that we that we can respond with resources to, to sort of wrap around and, and 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 find a path for you in that area it's just here. Um, thanks for everybody's responses. Um, you can keep piling in if you like. We're just a bit behind, um, about 10 minutes. So we'll wrap this up and then we'll um, go into some of the next slides that we have here so that we're able to finish on time. Um, okay, so I'll go into the next, uh, I'll pass it over to Paul. So um, I'm great at uh, making up time. I know I like to talk, but I can, I can um, usually crunch it down pretty good. Capital plan, um, you know, this is one of those areas where, you, where initially, again, you think of physical assets. How is that gonna um, influence my, um, my health and wellness plan? But, you know, you're talking about, you know, health stations, health centers, nursing stations, like what kind of things might you need in the future to deliver the programs that people are asking for, um, making sure that those are in alignment. Um, how old are the buildings that you have? Are they reaching the end of their life cycle um, for delivering um, future programs? Um, you know, what is, do you have the land base to, to build some of these structures that, you know, if, if it comes up that you are, are looking for a big recreation facility, um, to improve the, the health and wellness of your community. You have the land base for that. Do you have a, certain approvals for that? So there's lots of capital um, issues that can influence your health plan and vice versa. You know, your capital department is gonna wanna know that you have these grandiose plans and that they need to put it in their ask of the funders that are funding these capital um, investments. Next. Um, let's see, linking things to consider. If your capital plan exists, reviewing that and seeing what, you know, some of the major projects are moving forward. If it's in development, you know, where can you make some alignment um, with those and how could the two plans complement each other? Um, we have lots, again, and I, I keep repeating it, but making sure that your programming or your programming goals are in alignment with the infrastructure that you have in place. Um, you know, again, if, if people are coming back to the community and you're going to need larger spaces to deliver some of those programs, um, and just making sure that those are in alignment. I mean, we... We have to make sure that our capital team is, you know, in, li in line with um, our program delivery team as well. So it's something that you would have to do on just a bit of a smaller scale. So um, new activity. Are we breaking out again or are we staying here? No, nope, we're just, uh, we're just going to stay in the main group and have them post in the chat. Okay, so um, here's a, a, a great picture of a, of a sports field, um, softball, soccer, um, you know, capital project. Um, 
um, that your community has been um, approved for. Um, what, I'm getting these in the right order, but what um, plans or what areas in your community might this project um, influence or be a part of or, or activities that um, might be associated with just this one project? Put that in the chat box. Um, put in your thoughts. You know, I, um, like I, uh, I'll, I'll sort of maybe get you started, but you know, obviously this is a big capital project in the capital plan. Um, maybe it's also in a land use plan. Obviously this is a piece of reserve that has been identified for this type of activity. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that it's not an area that had cultural significance, it's a, it's a piece that, you know, maybe community members even voted on, on how this parcel of land was gonna be used, and what the priorities are. And those can be pulled from, quite frankly, like plans like CCPs and stuff like that, like, hey, recreation and keeping our um, youth and people busy is, you know, one of the most important things in our community. So, you know, we'd rather have this than you know, a big Costco on our reserve. So I'll move into um, one of the other plans that we're kind of um, looking at that could be potentially aligning is land use plans or uh, physical development plans. And so these you know, we wanted to pull this quote from Georgia Cook from Namgis First Nation. I mean, this quote really speaks to, you know, um, doing activities and cultural practices on the land itself, food and medicine gathering, um, stories that are shared about our lands or, or, you know, among our generations, the songs and even the familiar connections that we have while we're on the land. And I think, you know, this is a, this really speaks to that interconnectedness of, you know, the environment and the land use. And um, even though, you know, land, like these kind of activities really reside outside of that health box. Um, and I think I've kind of said this in our little breakout room too, is that really um, it's that social determinants of health lens and looking at, you know, even though they're not directly related, related to health, they can have an influence or impact on the health and wellness of individuals, families, and communities as a whole. So really highlighting, you know, land use plans can really also influence a community health and wellness plan and aligning those can also be um, one opportunity for building out your plan itself. And so I guess one activity, and I can't really see my notes here on the screen. Um, something went up, something's up with my screen viewer. So. Um, I'll just kind of quickly, you know, ask some, you know, considering questions and even with time that we have. Um, so it's just looking at, you know, what are current, what are some current activities that are, you know, looking at land-based healing. And I think it was brought up in the chat as well as really looking at, you know, building in capital, food security, building gardens, even, you know, using that land, salmon fishing, you know, cedar bark harvesting, um, all of those types of things can also be built in for mental wellness, you know, spiritual wellness, you know, really capturing that, you know, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental kind of um, realms of health. And so um, I think, you know, this kind of really speaks to that land use and it's super important to acknowledge and really highlight the interconnectedness of, of um, you know, the land around us and the importance of that. Um, so I kind of breezed through this one just to kind of give you a little bit of ideas. Um, we're always open, you know, our door is always open if you want to have a chat about the different plans that you have in community in your mind. Um, and so with this slide, it kind of wraps up, you know, some of our um, content that we have today. And we have about a little bit of time for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself, um, raise your hand by using, you know, the little uh, function that you have in your um, toolbox, or you can put it in the chat. 
um, definitely uh, we'll be able to take a few questions here. Or we're just that good. We have no questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we have um, we have a, a question from Kirsten. How are funds to be used for community engagement during COVID? So, um, you know, I think we we'll probably have a lot of questions around. Um, you know, probably communities have been on pause for three, four, five months. Um, you know, there's lots of eligible activities um, that the funding can be used for. Again, um, I think we've sent out some documentation that, you know, funds will automatically be rolled over into the next fiscal year. We're really looking for these plans to be reflective of a community-driven process. So we don't want people rushing to get a plan done by March 31st just to get it in. So uh, that being said, there's you know, lots of um, engagement that you're looking to do in a really weird environment. So you know, I, I would think you know, if you need the pro version of Zoom um, to engage with your communities, if maybe you need to develop survey packages that are delivered door to door or electronically, um, you know, maybe it's SurveyMonkey, um, you know, online resources, you know, I think those are activities that um, you could use um, your planning dollars to, to sort of feed some of that engagement. I know it would be easy. Um, normally, you just cook a meal and everybody comes. And then you then you make sure that they uh, fill out a survey before they get in the in the draw for a prize. But you know, those are those days aren't here right now and probably not coming back anytime soon. So um, anything that's, that's you know, if, you, if you're, I think we're pretty flexible on how you engage in your community. You know, we're not talking about, you know, $50,000 of capital, um, capital investment of, uh, of computers and servers or anything like that. But, you know, if you're really, um, questioning whether uh, it's an ineligible expense, um, you know, give us a call, give your funding advisor a call. Um, but, you know, I think we're pretty, you know, we're talking about um, pretty low level investments um, just to, you know, ensure that you're getting that engagement from your communities. So I think we're pretty supportive of, of, of most, um, most activities that do that. Thanks for the question, Kirsten. That was a really good question. And uh, a fairly hot topic for us <laughs> and for a lot of communities in this landscape, for sure. Is there, I think we might have time for maybe one more question before we kind of wrap up. And so if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or pop it into the chat. Also putting it out there too, like, you know, questions may come up afterwards, feel free to kind of shoot us an email. Um, we'll share our contact information at the end of these slides here. Um, I have a comment. Um, just before this meeting, I was on with Heather McDonald and we were talking about um, sharing resources and how do we pull together uh, as sister organizations and support one another. So I think we need to further the discussion on the possibility of that happening because we're doing it and we're we're building it and i think it's important that we share resources in in community and reach out to people who have or organizations that have um, a lot of success in different areas and just support each other in that way i think it's important for that as well and, and I think it's important to, you know, really have that in mind when you're developing your plan, right? Your plan becomes really a great tool to make those um, partnerships, 
with organizations that can provide resources. You know, they, it's, it's almost like a business plan where you can, you know, say, hey, this is the area that we really want to, to move forward with. And we know you're playing in that space. Um, we look, really look for some support in this area. And they're, you know, really comforted that you've gone to the trouble of, you know, getting information from your community, putting it in a plan, and you've got, you know, a real path forward in that area that they're looking to partner with you. So I think that is a good lens to, to put on while you're thinking about um, uh, your health and wellness planning on, on what kind of opportunities are out there. Like I said, you know, you're, hopefully you're not just thinking FNHA, 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 that you've got you know, a broader scope that you can bring in a lot of things that maybe your community members aren't used to having access to. Such a great point, for sure. So I think we have one more question from Patricia. Um, we have changed our delivery of programming, which is FB pages, which seems to get a lot of community members involved. I think that this meeting has shown me to do the engagement through the FB platform that we already get a lot of feedback with. I was somewhat stuck on this planning process. Thank you. Aww. Thanks, Patricia. More of a comment. Awesome. Good to hear. I'm guessing FB is um, Yeah, we're more and more into the virtual world as we go through this together, <laughs> for sure. So with that, I'm just going to hop into um, the next slide. So we wanted to get um, some of your feedback. So Vanessa, if you can drop in um, the survey to tell us how we did today and how we can improve um, these, you know, upcoming webinars and sharing circles. Um, so feel free to kind of, you know, pop in there and um, fill out our survey. And um, we'll also, for those who didn't, who had to leave a little bit earlier, we'll also put it in the um, follow-up email as well. Um, so feel free to take a few minutes to do that as well. And I think it's important to mention that our team will be reaching out to every community that has received planning dollars in the last 12 months. And just really getting a pulse check on where you're at, um, how much um, support you need, which areas you're looking at, you know, even if you haven't started, we, we want to hear that and we want to be able to support you to move to the next step. So I think, um, you know, we'll be doing that over the next little while. Um, so get a real sense of, of where you're at, where you want to go, what, what, what you might need help with just to get you over that hump or get you rolling or get that one community meeting or um, you know, we're happy to, you know, open these webinars, not to just the health director, but, you know, your entire planning team, maybe your chief and council want to hear what, you know, uh, what a topic is or what the next topic should be. So, so have those um, thoughts in mind that, that we're definitely going to touch bases and, and maybe even, you know, we, we're, we're available for any level of support, whether that's, you know, developing a short term work plan to meet some um, milestones to, you know, just sort of help you get the ball rolling if, if that's, um, you know, a piece that you've been struggling with. Yeah, and on that, um, I think that what we want to leave you with today is some of the offerings and partnership opportunities that we have. Um, this is meant to just really highlight areas that our team can help and work with you, like Paul mentioned, after, after the webinar. So we talked a little bit about how we're looking at doing a wraparound approach and we can team together with IS, the CCP team, um, to make sure that we're having those conversations collaboratively. Uh, we can do our best to support coordination of gathering existing and past versions of your community health and wellness or your CCP or CDE plans. Um, we can support and working collaboratively to highlight overlapping themes across your plans. And also, like we've talked about today, support virtual community engagement to really ground truth goals that were identified in past plans, which is a, a really important topic, as, as was mentioned during the breakout. 
So if you're not sure where to go from here, I think what, what we're trying to say is let's have a conversation. So if you go to the next slide, Jeff. And so this is our team. Um, we've got our community.development at FNHA uh, email address there at the bottom. We're all um, really looking forward. Like Paul said, we're gonna be reaching out to everyone who has received funding. Uh, and if you are already having these conversations, please reach out to us and we can do our best to create a, a wraparound approach that includes um, a really great planning, strong planning perspective, as well as regional and other teams from within the FNHA. So I just want to thank everyone for taking some time today and joining us and being part of this webinar. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and seeing you at future community development webinars. Bye everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye, Bye everyone.